Hi, welcome back to Computers for the Completely Clueless. I'm Kim Cavanaugh, and this is... Lee Keller. What do you know? Yeah, and we're talking about Picasa. Picasso 3. What a great little application. Yeah. We saw in the last segment how fast and easy it is to fix red eye. So um, nice. And I think for the home photographer, probably the two other most common tasks that people have to do is, number one, to crop an image. Especially now, by, you get that, you know, you took a picture at the family reunion of, uh, you know, to the kids over there, and basically you got the whole family reunion. You didn't want to Right, exactly. You want to have a nicer picture that just focuses in on, on Timmy and Sally over there. They're doing something particularly cute. You're down at the uh, fair, and you got the whole crowd there. You don't need these people. You don't right, know. And you so crop that out. cropping or removing part of the picture can have a big impact on the actual quality of the picture and the story that you're trying to tell with your yeah. photograph. And the other big one is color correction. Uh, color correction can be needed for a lot of different reasons, maybe... Uh, the natural light is poor, or maybe you're inside. Just and want to make it look better. You want to make it look better. Well, that's a good enough reason, Lee. <laughs> yeah. Well, have you ever taken a picture under fluorescent lights? Oh. And everything is yellow. Yeah. And, and so, you know, if you ever looked at a picture and said, oh, boy, the color just doesn't look right, the, uh, the, what the tools that Picasso has are, are really phenomenal for doing that. Yeah. Well, let's take a look at the first one. Here's another uh, trip, uh, uh, um, picture from Lee's uh, extended absence down in Mexico. It's supposed to be uh, one of the oldest monasteries there. But the oldest you know monastery. I don't. Yeah, there's a lot of trash laying on the ground and tourists and that kind of stuff. So, now wait a minute, what did you just do? I just selected a... Okay, so to, to get to the picture, we double-clicked it, mm -hmm. and that brought up on the left-hand side our, uh, our tool set, basically. I'm going to choose Crop. And then right at the top, upper left, there's a button that says Crop. Now, it'll also do all these different ratio things for you automatically, so... Wow. Th th these things are automatic. I I'm going to do a manual. Let's go El Manual. Now, when you go to Manual... You just take your mouse right over the top of the mm -hmm. photograph. So I'm over here on the photograph part now. Okay. And and, uh, and you click and hold down your mouse button mm -hmm. and drag out a box. As soon as we get back out to the photo, there we go. Okay. So I'm just going to drag this out. And that's all I really want in the picture. Now, if I want to take a really quick look at that, I click Preview. And there's what it's going to look like uh -huh. when I'm all done. That's not bad. I think maybe if you move the bottom part of that crop up a little bit. So move it up there. All right. So again, you go right back to the original picture. You can mm -hmm. change. Basically, it's pretty cool because it grays out everything on the picture except for what's going to be left once you perform your crop. So now you've got nothing but monastery. Preview. Yeah. Okay. It's and good. to make it permanent, in this case, we I just click, click on Apply. apply. And away you go. That's it. All right. Now, that's pretty cool. That's a cropping uh, operation. Let's take a quick look at color correction. Actually, let's just stay on this picture, Lee. Really? Because uh, the contrast is a little bit low. The contrast is the, is the difference between lights and darks. Mm -hmm. So uh, you have an auto contrast there. You have a retouch. But isn't there one about just feeling lucky? Uh, Marion loves this one. <laughs> so I'm feeling lucky. He's going to look at your picture. Look at it. As soon as I roll over that. It's it's ready to go. So okay. I'm going to click on that, and it goes through, and it automatically corrects what it thinks are the way the colors. Now should I be. see a little better color contrast. Now it looks to me like it's a little sharper. Uh, not bad. How about down at the bottom there? We have a thing called fill light. Well, something else I want to use, but let's say I, I thought I was feeling lucky and I didn't get so oh, lucky. Oh, you're undo. I'm feeling lucky. Right. You can go down the bottom here and undo it. That's kind of the story of my life. Yeah. Uh -huh. I've been looking for this button a lot of times. I know, so. I know. But unfortunately, somebody keeps hitting the undo your feeling lucky button. Yeah, okay. All right, so there we are back in the original one. Not so bad. Let's Actually, let's go back over to the library and maybe see if we find a different photo because yeah. that has a lot of grays and stuff in it. How about this picture? There you go. That's a pretty good shot there. Yeah. Now, nice colors in the foreground, but the background's kind of pale. Let's see if I'm feeling lucky. We'll kind of, kind of sort that out for us. Actually, it looks like it just brightened. Yeah, it did. It brightened the background. Uh, but it kept the foreground, the, the trees and mm -hmm. the houses in the foreground, the same as they were before. So it did a pretty nice job. Now, let's do undo that because there's another one here uh, called auto color. All right. Now, when you click on auto color, it's going to do similar kinds of things, but it's a lot more subtle. Okay. Yeah. Well, typically... one of the advantages of I'm feeling lucky is it uses auto contrast, auto color, and a little bit of the retouch values, maybe some fill light. It actually goes through and it does what 
it thinks it should be right. doing. So it, it, it evaluates the picture, thinks it knows what it needs to be done, and it goes ahead and takes care of it. So an awful lot of really cool retouching things in here. Really too much for us to go into in this, this one particular kind of thing show. To play with. I mean, right. when, when you get a program like Picasso, it begs for you to play with it and mess with things. Right. See what kind of cool right. things so you can do. So fill light, for instance, you've got that photograph you took that's just a little bit too dark. Yeah. Uh, you can take it in Picasso and just start gradually bumping up the fill light until you get a, a, a better representation of what you're after. I think we'll look at some of those next week. All right, we'll do that next week. And uh, this pretty much wraps up Picasso, right? Um, well, for today. For today. So next week we'll be back to talk more about Picasso and some of the special effects and really very advanced kind of things that you can do with this free program. Okay. And uh, we'll get into special effects and web albums and how to ship your photos down to the local uh, drugstore so for processing and make yeah. looks. And there's tons so many and neat tons things. of things. But in the meantime, Lee, we've got to do our viewer, viewer uh, mail of the week. And, it's amazing. Uh, we still get these things. I know. It's awesome. But if somebody wants to send us something, how do they do that? Well, you can do that through our other uh, show's website, palmbreezecafe.com slash questions. Okay, okay. That works great. All right. And this week, we got a question from John in North Palm Beach. Okay. And John's confused about a term that he hears all the time. I keep hearing about flash drives, USB drives, jump drives, mm -hmm. thumb drives. Are all these things the same thing? And uh, if so, do I need one? Uh, and if I do need one, why do I need one? Hey, uh, that's a good question, that, John. Good oh, questions. and thanks. Love the show. Good. So thanks for writing in, John. And uh, actually, all of those things are the same thing, right? Yeah. A flash drive, a jump drive, a USB drive. Just a bunch of words for the same thing. A bunch of words, which would the... <laughs> <laughs> what would that thing be, Lee? Well, it, it's sort of like memory on a... a Tiny little stick or something like that. Right. It's it's actually kind of like you know if you John if you remember back when the day you had uh, magnetic floppy disks. I remember yeah, like or five and a quarter ones or the little ones. And then little you went to the little three and right, a half. Right. Right. Well, things have progressed progressed since then, John. And and now your memory isn't on a floppy drive. It can mm -hmm. be loaded onto a stick. And, and this is a basic uh, thumb drive. Okay, that's a thumb drive and or, or a USB drive. drive or flash drive. And you can see on this side that it is a uh, an eight, it says right there, eight gigabytes. Eight gigabytes. Eight wow. gigabytes is a lot. Now, John, if you remember back to those floppy drives, that would be roughly the same as about 8,000 floppy drives. Yeah. 8,000 floppy drives uh, would be needed to fill up the, mm -hmm. or, or, or save the same kind of thing as you would here. Now, so why would you need all that memory, Lee? Well, well the nice thing is you can carry all your documents with okay. this. this. This lets you put the pictures that you want to share with your friends. You can right. take it to their computer, right. put it in. You don't have to email them if they're local. Right. You can carry a lot of things, like if you want to show off your grandchildren, you go over to a friend's house. Good. Eight gigabytes, you could put a lot of, you could put you video can. on this. Sure. So a lot of things can be stored on here. They're very secure. Now, this is a little bit oddly because it's got a retractable, but there's the end of it, yeah. and, and that plugs into the USB port on really any computer. Yeah, and I have to admit, I don't even like that you retractable don't? thing because... When I go to insert, a lot of times it starts to shove oh, back in, well. and it's a little tricky sometimes. But you know what? You look at the size of this, and these things have gotten so small. Those medical problems could be overcome, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> <laughs> but All right, so that, that, this that's is a nice gig, small one. And so is this. Uh, Lee. Now, that's, uh, the one on the, uh, on, in your right hand uh, is the Uber Geek flash this drive. This thing is amazing. In fact, you know, when we looked at this, we had this part that plugs in. This actually has the pins on the other side. Wow. And all you do is you put that in your USB Slide port. Slide it into the same port. Doesn't need to be any different. It's just way, way smaller. And there's one more powerful thing on this one because this one has a little emblem on the one side here. Mm -hmm. This says Windows Vista. Okay. And Vista will let you dynamically increase memory by just inserting this. You mean like I'll be able to remember my uh, uh, the people's Only names that I met? Only if you convert to Vista. Oh, you mean, oh, oh, for the computer, not mm -hmm. my personal memory. That's not going to work. Okay. But well, that small, same thing right. as this big one. So, John, great question. Jump drive, USB drive, flash yeah. drive, uh, you know, it's flash really memory device. Your, your briefcase. If yeah. you have things you want to carry around, these are very convenient. Right, they Whether are. Whether or not you need one, that's going to be personal need. And, and there's not a big expense of expense because you paid how much for that? I paid $12 for this thing. We can never give him an opportunity to say that enough. All right, folks, uh, thanks to John for your, uh, of your note, and thanks for watching. And we'll see you next week on Computers for the Complete Week.